Hello everybody. Um, getting ready to change out some of the mystery filters on a Yamaha HPDI. This is a 2001 model. I'm going to show you the model number on there. It's a VZ150TLRZ. So uh, I did three cylinders yesterday and I'll show you a little bit about that. So we've got the cowl off of this and uh, for the uh, passenger side because I don't know my ports and starboards um, we ended up having to take the cover off <clears throat> I took the three coils off disconnected the spark plug wires took all that off and we ended up pulling the fuel rail which is behind this and I had to disconnect these both ends of this hose right here uh, that's so we could get the uh, fuel rail off and uh, we changed out the filters put the filters back and new filters in and then we put everything back together so I did that yesterday so I could figure out how to do it so today we're going to do the other side I'm going to try to video this and this is one of my first videos so we'll see how it goes but same basic plan um, except for I may have to take the cover off up here to take the other end of this one out uh, we will see when we get to it but yesterday I did not have to remove this because I had a wrench to fit into that nut behind my finger back there and I will show you that when we get to this side so <clears throat> the tools that I had to have to do this yesterday was I needed a screwdriver for basically a pry bar I have a pry bar because that fuel rail is kind of hard to get off a screwdriver Phillips screwdriver I think that is a two that is a p2 screwdriver I used a wrench with a screw and that's to remove the filters out of the uh, injector I have a, a couple of sockets this one is if I can read it and I can't yes I can that's a 12 millimeter and I had to have a 8 millimeter and I have an extension on this one a little small uh, ratchet and this is a 5 millimeter uh, Allen wrench and this is the curved wrench that I happen to have that fit that bolt and uh, we'll talk about that one in a second because You've got to get that bolt out. Sorry. Yes, you've got to get that bolt out. And if you can't get in there with something to get it out, you're going to have to pull this whole plate. So, we'll get started in a second. Okay. Now that we have everything set up, camera-wise, it looks like it's working. We'll get started on this. So, screwdriver. I did have to have a screwdriver or something else. There, this cover comes off with two, there's actually four uh, little plastic tabs that hold this on the fuel rail. So to get that off, you have to get those four tabs loose. And if we can see that right there, I'll pop one on this side and pull a little bit. And you can push the other one from the back side I don't know whether you're going to be able to see that or not, whether I can or not either. You can push the rail. And I do have a flashlight if I have to have it. Try that again. Yesterday this was really easy. There's one side. And I can't see the other side. Maybe I can't. And we'll do this side. And I can see that side. Start with that one first. So, and actually, what I did yesterday was take the take the coals off. Uh, you will notice that I did mark one, two, three, four, five, six, four. There's a four on there. You can barely see it. Five, six. So we're going to go ahead and take these off. These come out by, by pushing in and pulling right out. Push the button, pull out. So, 
I can't get to the other ones without pulling that out first. So let's go here. This may help me a little bit. Okay, that coal's loose. So if you can get in there and see, my sight's getting worse. If you can get in there and see those four tabs without doing this, you're probably better off. Because you don't want to drop these on the ground. And you don't want to drop these screws down in the motor. Or in the cowl below the motor. And I also have a nice little box to throw all those pieces in so you don't lose them. And these are not on real tight, so I don't guess you have to kill yourself. We're going to move these out of the way for a second. Now you can see the tab. Tab, tab, and there's a matching tab on the other side. Go back to the screwdriver. And we're going to pull that tab just to ease it back and push that one now that's loose now let's see if we can get to this one a little better pull that tab and i can see it now right there so you have to kind of wiggle this a little bit to get it off and it'll probably pop back a couple times like that And I might still be connected right there. And yesterday I said this was easy. I think I've changed my mind. I still have that connected, that's why. I can actually push it with my finger now. There we go. All right, so this plastic cover comes off like that. You'll notice that the coals are going through it. And for later knowledge, this coal goes in here and comes out below it. This one comes in here and goes out below it. Just helps you get everything back together right. So we're going to pull that off, pull that spark plug out, spark plug wire out, pull that one out, and you should have a cover off. There's your cover. <clears throat> now, have this coil loose again. It's a press and pull. And notice why I did this. Number five. Now the wires are probably the right length, but just in case. There you go. Five is off. This one is loose. Same thing again. Push in. Push in. Pull it out. Now this one's wire. This one's kind of pushed down through here. You have to pull it out. There you go. And that's very interesting. Okay, that one's marked, and the extension helps with this, with my big hands. All right. and again, we don't want to drop anything, drop a coal, drop a bolt, and there's a washer on that bolt. Take that off, bolts out, plugs loose. Three coals. All the bolts are in the box. Now, here's where I have a couple things. You're going to have to turn this loose. You're going to have to squeeze that out, which I did with a screwdriver yesterday. If I can do that here. Not very hard at all. And I say that, and it will be. There we go. That one's loose. And that 
one's loose and you'll notice these wires are below here connected here okay this comes off the same way it's a press and pull press and pull press and pull the good thing about doing a video is I can go back and look in case I forget something but it looks like we're shouldn't be that hard that's out this is out of the way disconnected from the fuel rail leave it hanging and now one thing I did not do that I did on the other side magic marker Just because. Six. Five. Four. Now this is pretty apparent what we're doing here, but just in case. All right, so here's where this thing comes in. You can't get this fuel rail off because this is in the way. See these two tabs. And unless you can take that bolt out, you're gonna end up having to take the whole plate off. So yesterday, I just happened to luck up and had something that fit. And this is probably not the right size. Well, this is old. It says 3 8 Oh, sorry. This one you can actually get to. How nice is that? So I can actually use a regular ratchet on that which is what size? Is that my 12? Nope. Hmm. Okay, so the size on that one would be something in between. Let's see what we got. Right there it is. So that one is a 10. Okay, so I'm gonna drop that. So now we added a 10 to our collection. So we're gonna take that loose. And it's pretty, it's pulling there pretty stiff. <clears throat> there it goes. All right. And you notice I get to work in the weather. I don't have a nice shop to work in. So, get to be outside. It may start raining here in a little bit. So I'm taking that off. And I'm going to drop that in the box. <coughs> Alright, so. The other thing I noticed is there's three black retaining wire clips here. And I'm going to take off. Now, yesterday... These came off pretty easily, except I had one drop down in here and it was painful to get out. So we're going to be a little bit careful to try and not drop it. And they just basically just come right off and they'll slide backwards off of the fuel injector. And if I can get a hold of it, I did have a pair of pliers. What did I do with that yesterday? I've got a long needle nose pair of pliers I was using, so that came out okay. pop pop and they just fit on the back of the fuel rail but they seem to clip on the bottom of the fuel injectors so you see the design cut into them right there they they kind of fit in the fuel injector so um, I had to put those on after I put the rail back on but let's see what we end up with here and that one's gonna be hard to get to so let me grab my needle nose pliers So we'll add that to the collection, if I can get to it. And I might just have to drop it, which I don't want to do. And it might just come out. It's not like the old trucks. And cars that you could sit on the tire well and work on an engine you just can't do that anymore so this one's going to be especially fun to get back on I 
do something like this. Let's not say we did. It sounds like we're going to get a little rain on the carport. <clears throat> okay. Everything's turned loose. All the wires are turned loose. Everything's turned loose. So now we have to figure out how to get this off. So now yesterday, what I did was, because I didn't want to scratch anything up, I got me an old rag and doubled it up. And put it right here on top of that bolt and kind of pried it a little bit. So there's three bolts you can kind of per pry on. And you can just ease it. And I just worked it. Oh, nope, nope. Dummy. I know some of y'all were sitting at home going, hey, you forgot to do something. And I just discovered another problem. That bolt, I'm going to have to have a wrench for. So, to pop these, I think I have a wrench out here. All right. So we're going to pause for a minute while I go get a wrench. To the fray, we have added a 12 millimeter ratcheting ratchet. So we have to take this off too. So with that ratchet on there, we can pull that off. Removing these three bolts will make removing this fuel rail much easier. Uh, and I should also go ahead and remove that. <clears throat> so this is stiff enough that it holds you back. This is your five millimeter right there. Now one secret that I'll mention again in a minute is when you go to put these things back together is putting some oil on the O-rings now you also notice that they've got paint on these and I'm probably going to go invest in some paint because I don't have any paint pen. And go invest in me a paint pen to paint these back so that uh, we can make sure that they don't move on us. And you have a washer there. That one's gonna be ornery. Stuck on with the paint probably goes in the bin where did my screwdriver go there it goes it's probably painted on there all right comes off it goes in the bin now I had to pry this off yesterday with the screwdriver <coughs> and some of them will come out really easily but just gently Try this out. We'll see an O-ring pop out here on the end of this in a minute, so you'll understand how this works. So I just ease it, ease it out. Okay. Now this is going to be fun. I can tell right now because that is giving me pressure. Almost got it out. Now it's completely out. Okay. I, okay all right. Good. Um, story behind this boat, you'll have to be watching for fuel here. Story behind this boat is uh, it has sat for 15 years without being ran, and the fuel is lacquered. And uh, so that's why you're not seeing any fuel pour out of all these connections because fuel will be here. When you pull these off, you'd have fuel everywhere, so you've got to be careful with that too. All right, so now, <clears throat> now back to where I was with the pry bar. All right, so that, that looks like it's gonna be fine. I'm not there yet, let's get the bolts out. Maybe they'll come out. That one's not gonna come out, hmm. This one will come out. This one will come out. Notice there's a washer below them. Take that out. Also note the size, but I happen to know from yesterday all three were the same size. We're going to note the size on those. And this one looks like it's going to have to stay in there until we get the 
rail off, and I'm hoping this will screw all the way up. Ooh. That's loose. This is going to make it fun. <clears throat> the other side didn't have this problem. The three bolts came right out from the other side. So we're going in back in here. To try to get onto that nut. Just to give me something to pry on. And you'll notice it's already coming out. It's already loose. You can see a crack forming right there. Yep. I'm just trying to be careful not to break anything. If you break one of these injectors, you're going to spend a little bit of money. Now, yesterday I ended up also note there's a brass sleeve here and a brass sleeve here. When you pull this rail out, you will drop those if you're not paying attention. Because they're actually loose. And I'm presuming it's something to keep it from crushing the fuel rail, maybe. There was not one in the middle one on the other side. And I don't think there's one in the middle one on this side. Now just a little twisting action. This took a little bit yesterday. And again, putting this back in, if you'll put oil on it, or lube, it will just literally just slide right back in. And this was the hardest part yesterday about doing this. Okay. <clears throat> there we go. Easy. Easy. Wish we had smell vision. Could smell the lacquer. Okay, again, there's no fuel coming out of this because, whew, that's going to be fun. So my problem is going to be getting that out. Maybe this will slide down. And out, and it did. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, so you'll notice here, there's my third bolt. I'm going to leave it in there. There's a sleeve. You'll notice that there is a tapered end on that sleeve that goes toward the engine. I'm going to leave them in there just for now. Lay that in my parts box. <clears throat> now to the fun part. You'll notice, and I'm presuming this video is coming in well enough for you to see it. Get my, get my camera over here. If you look right in the end of that, you can see the filter. Now you'll notice this is cracked. All of these have a crack on them, so don't, don't feel like you broke something, okay? There's the O-ring, O-ring. But we're taking the filter out. You can barely see it right inside of that. Now, I picked up a 20-pack of these online for $20. And I'll try to remember to put the, uh, the link in the description to where I got them if I can find it. There's the old ones that came out yesterday from the other side. So we're going to put in three new ones. They came in a nice little pack like that. So there's 20 of them in there. Plenty to do this engine. And I've got a friend that's got the same boat. We may do his engine too. <clears throat> now, here's the trick. You find my screw we talked about earlier. Uh, I think that probably came out of a set of blinds we installed or something like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see which one's the easiest one. Let's do this one first maybe. I'm going to stick the screw in there, and I turned it about, ooh, this is going to be tight. I've turned it about four turns. One, two, three, four. All right. <clears throat> now, here's the trick I used. <coughs> had this pair of pliers and it has a nice little groove in it right here you can, you can see that groove so what you can do maybe this one's going to be tight i have to do it this way 
can get a hold of it. I was using this as a pry. Yesterday I would get right here and I could stick this through here and pry. This one's going to be a little bit different because that's in the way. Let's see what we can do. I can probably pry it right there maybe. So I've got a hold of it and you just I'll just apply the easy steady pressure. Don't get in a big hurry. Just easy steady pressure. And you'll notice that that came right out. And there's the old one. And I was able to blow through it, so I don't think there was anything wrong with it from that perspective, but hey, it's old. So, old one. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out. That's old, let me get the discard of that one. In the bag, that's the old ones. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get out three new ones. Okay, brand new. Trying to be careful not to get them dirty. Here's the way I put it back in. And this again may be a little different because of the way this is laid out. I drop it in the hole. And I actually took the back end of my screwdriver and tapped it in. But I was able to do that from a straight on position. So we'll see what happens here. I'm going to have to do something a little bit different. They literally just tapped right in. I don't like that. Let's see here. Need something. Flat. Need to get some rain. There we go. All right, you notice they got it in and it's flush. Go back and look at the other ones, they're about the same. So it's in, that one's in. And the good Lord's gonna give us a little bit of rain, which won't mess up the video, but hey, we don't complain about rain here. About four turns. Again, the trick I used yesterday was this, and it seemed to work pretty good. And it will come out eventually. Hmm, that's moving a little too much. <laughs> uh oh. Mm. <clears throat> Don't like that didn't have this problem yesterday so I am afraid we may have to do something different shoot we'll try it again so we may have to end up with a fuel injector here I hope not Go ahead and get the other one out. You know, yesterday I didn't screw the first screw in far enough and I popped it. I may have to go get a bigger screw.
That one came out. With a ping. Bad one. Oops. Bad one. New one in. Now we'll try that wrench, whatever I did with it. Yes, you can say with it raining it's a good day to do this instead of fishing. See if we can do something different. That's not gonna work. <clears throat> Okay, we're back to that one, and I don't like that one much. Let me see. Probably going to have to have a bigger screw. say this but I'm wondering if I put a bad one in that one because I've only got four over here my organizational skills is not burying me well today so because I don't know I think I do know Because I don't know, I'm going to take this one back out and throw it away. And this is not good. How many of you out there saw me do that? I didn't say anything. Yep, I think I did. That was a bad one. We don't want to do that again. Bad one in the bag. be honest with you I'm gonna trash these two because I can't tell 
Yeah, I can. That's the old one. That's a new one. So one of those in there probably is a new one. This is going back in. New one going in. And that one's in. Both those are in. So now, we have to figure out what the heck to do with this other one. And this is not going to pull it, I don't think. I might have to get a bigger screw. We'll give her one more shot here. I think it's because I'm pulling sideways. negative okay let me see if I can find a bigger screw and I'll come back okay I found a bigger screw it's short though but let's just see if we can get a hold of this and pull it now slightly bigger screw and the question comes to where to pry hope no 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 let's not break it And whoo, thank you. It came out. Mm. Okay, toss that right there. So I was able to get that one out, no damage done. Let's get another new one. Brand new out of the pack. Now, yesterday, the other ones went in like this. Easy. <clears throat> okay, we've now changed the three injectors. So now it's time to reverse the procedure. Now, let me get a little bit of oil, because I don't have any out here. <clears throat> okay, we're back. <clears throat> uh, got some of the blue oil Yamalu right there. Don't need much. It's got a couple drips actually off of the uh, reservoir on the other side. <clears throat> so, what I did yesterday, we made this very, very easy. It's going to be a little tedious with this right here. But, the rings, the O rings, are going to seat in here. And what I found was a little bit of oil on the finger right there. Right there, and right here, and watch those, you'll lose them. <clears throat> you might have just take those out. Come back to those in a minute. All right, so this is going to be fun because this is in the way. We're going to slide this back in. Try to get it back in place without having to fight it too much. And what's wrong? I think I have it upside down. I'll find it here in a second. I do. There's your input port. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and while we got it, put a little lube on that too. 
All right, now it's turned the right way. Rubber pieces out. All right, and that's where we're going to go right there. Now the question is, can I ease this back in? And I think this has enough spring in it. You can. If I can get them all together in the right place, that's in the way. All right, here we go. All right, so I've got all three of them lined up in place. And yesterday, all it took was a little push. One, two, three. Notice that just went right back in pretty. Everything's seated up. Let's see if this is lined up. It appears to be. Now, two brass collars. I should have showed it, but the, there's, an, there's a cut in here. These kind of help line it up to hold it in place is, is my guess. But they'll seat, seat. Same way here. They'll seat just fine. We'll go back and get our two other bolts. And we're coming back to here. And here. And I typically tighten everything down nice, just hand tight. First. And these weren't super torqued on there. They weren't that hard to get off. So I'm just going to grab the wrench. Let's just do something with the wrench first here since we've got it. So tighten it down just a little bit. Just snug them down. So I don't get any odd pressure on one or the other. And just kind of <clears throat> snug them down a little bit. So they're about the same. Now I'm gonna get this. And was that it? No. Yes, it was. We get that. And we're gonna tighten it. If somebody has a manual, which I don't have, there's probably a torque setting for this. More than likely. Okay, when I get that paint pen, I may paint these two to make sure they're not moving. <clears throat> okay, fuel rail's back in place. I lube that up, so let's get that back in here. If we can. Slid right in. Turned. I remember right, it's two shorties. Nope, it's the hex one. I mean the Allen Mitchell. That's not one of them. That's not one of them. Right there's one. Right there's the other. Two Allen wrenches. Two Allen wrench ones. Up. And I like to do this by hand so you don't cross thread something. I don't want a fuel rail cost, but I wouldn't want to mess one of those up. Okay, now they're both in there. So now, the same as we did with the bolts, let's just get them down snug. Those are good. Now, we have a rail to put on. And I just leave the nut in there. And 
let's see, which way did that go? It's up here. You have to go back to the video now and look. I don't record my facial expressions when I do stuff like this. You know, that's not where it's supposed to go, is it? It was down here. There we go. There's my old 1948 REO Speedwagon sitting in the yard. One of these days I'll start working on it. Those will be some good videos. So am I putting it in the wrong place? I don't think so. I think it goes right there. Okay. It looks like it needs to be angled a little bit when you put the bolt in it. Which will make it harder to do. Put it in on an angle. All right, now tighten this back down. All right. Thinking through to make sure I didn't forget anything. I did. Three wire retainers to go back on here. one and see it clips around that fuel injector. So get this one on. Just in case. Third finger never hurts. There we go. There we go. 
not get it. There we go. Popped in place around the fuel injector. Another just in case. put that one in there whether it was or not that's a five matches my other number five like I said these pretty much go where they are but just in case I always mark them all right and this one is going to go up here I think we'll just leave that through here And twist it around. Oh, nope, don't twist it around. Pop, pop, pop. Injectors are in. Alright, now we got this. For the coals. Drop that in. This one. Where did that one go? Right there. It's going to go right here. Just like this one over here. See this? Okay. All three of those are in. I tucked that right there, if I remember correctly, yesterday. Okay, one, two. They're all ready to go in. Come back for our coals. Number five. That's the middle one. This helps me not to drop stuff too. And you'll notice that they're laid out the way they're pointed. They match on this side, bubble to bubble, flat spot to flat spot. So. Says number four. Four is at the top. also use a small ratchet so that I don't over torque some things. 
Number four is going into number four. Oops. Snaps in. Drop it into there. This goes in here. Snaps in. In place. Notice the layout. Pointy. Of course, if you marked it when you put it in, you'd still be able to see it. So that says number six on it. So we're going into number six. hard to keep me from doing an old shiny and looking off somewhere. I like to look around. All right, that's torqued in. Or not torqued, I shouldn't say stork. It's tight. And we're plugged in. <coughs> and we are down to here. And this goes down through here. It's very unusual it has that on it. I don't know what that's for. I don't see a place for that to go. So we're going to put that right there. All that's in. So the last piece we have to do is the cover. Before we do that, plug, 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 in, 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 in and tight, in and tight, in and tight, right coils in the right place. Now, as I said when we put this thing together, you will notice and you'll see the kink on the cord. This goes up here and this one goes down here. All right. This is the one that really needs to go in. And this one is going to go right here. This one goes up here. This one goes up here when we slide everything together. So, and this was the fun part yesterday was getting this back in the right place and figuring out what I'd done wrong. So, two things. I pull that cord over and pull this cord over. Get it in there. Pull this cord over, I think if I recall correctly. It has a alignment thing I think goes right here. So I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to figure out why I'm not going in. Because I'm hitting, I'm not far enough over. All right. right there, now that's in. So if we did this right, I'm just going to make sure that all my cords are up in there and I'm not going to kink anything or cut anything. That goes there. That goes there, and we're caught and caught. So we have come full circle. And if we go back and look at this video later, it should look exactly like we did, other than maybe a little dirtier or cleaner when we did it before. Double checking my fuel rails in, and tight, 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 tight. So that is how to change the mystery filters on the right bank of the Yamaha HPDI 150 year model 2001